what is going on everybody as you can tell it is a chilly day in new york city right now it is currently like 30 degrees or so so i do have to dress a little warmer now on these colder walks walking to work right now it's early in the morning not too early i actually came in about 8 a.m today so not a big deal but the reason i'm filming this video is because i haven't done a straight up day in the life of a doctor video or a day in my life as a doctor video in a very long time i usually do these vlogs while i'm on call but i haven't just done a straight up day in my life where i take you around on my entire day at work so first and foremost as usual walk into work it's a chilly day and i have some pretty big cases to do today which i'm pretty excited about i'm also really out of breath right now for some reason but I'm going to bring you along for the ride as usual and we'll see what uh, we can get into. If the cases are good, I'll try to make some educational content about it or whatnot. So we'll see where it goes. See you soon. All right, so this video is sponsored by Board Vitals. Now you may have heard my prior video on passing the core and what my thoughts were on the core examination uh, last year when I did this video and I discussed how the hands down best resource for this exam is the Board Vitals question bank. The questions are almost identical to that on the actual core exam. The explanations of the questions are second to none. I learned so much from this QBank. I can't even recommend it enough. Even if this video wasn't sponsored, I would still tell you all that this is the best QBank far and away. That's how much I loved it. All of my colleagues who also passed the core exam felt the exact same way about this QBank. So do yourself a favor and use my code Dr. Cellini to get 20% off the entire Board Vitals website with the exception of the CME gift card products. So use my code, Dr. Cellini, now get 20% off your Board Vitals Radiology Question Bank and pass the core exam. Now, let's get back to the video. I guess people are still taking city bikes to work every day. As you know, I'm a huge fan of city bikes, but I haven't used them quite a bit of time because it's too cold to. And like whenever it gets a little warm out, I feel like I can still use a city bike, but when I get on it and the wind starts blowing all over my face, yeah, I become freezing, so. I just stick to walking right now. Now, I will say, when it's this cold outside, for some reason my nose always runs. I don't know how many of you all, your nose runs when it's freezing outside, but mine runs like crazy. Maybe it's because I have a big nose, I don't know. But I do like wearing masks in the winter, I will say, way better in the summer because it actually keeps you warm and keeps the wind off of your face. The only downside of that is my nose just runs all in my mask the whole like 20 minute walk. So that's kind of annoying, but the benefit of working at a hospital is that I can just get a new mask when I get to work. It's not half bad. Also, I haven't told you what I'm actually doing this week. I'm not on call, as you can probably tell, since I'm not filming a week in my life on call video, but I'll tell you what I'm doing as soon as I get in the hospital because my hand is frozen from holding this phone in the cold weather. <laughs> All right, so my case is officially delayed uh, currently. Well, the bad news is I'm like, terribly tired right now. But the good news is we have a really cool case coming up right now that nobody is covering, which means I am the fellow that gets to cover it. And that is a TIPS procedure, which I think I mentioned it on my last week on call video. It is a transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunt, and it is done for portal hypertension in the setting of cirrhosis. So people with bad liver disease have portal hypertension, which can cause a host of issues such as hepatic encephalopathy, predisposition to hepatic cellular carcinoma, it can also cause refractory ascites and bleeding uh, varices as well. So we do the TIPS procedure to essentially relieve some pressure and create a bypass essentially, which allows the pressure in the portal system to kind of decrease a little bit and prevent some of those complications I just mentioned. If I can find a good diagram online or something, so you, uh, know exactly what I'm talking about. But it's a pretty complex procedure that has become not so complex over the years. It used to be like the it thing to do in interventional radiology, but now it's kind of like 
not bread and butter, but it's not as challenging as it used to be. So, all right, let me go check on this patient and get this room ready and we'll do a procedure and hopefully check in afterwards. All right, so that was a complete change of plans, what just happened there. So instead, oh, my hair looks good today, right? So instead of a TIPS, ended up doing a uh, semi-urgent pulmonary artery embolectomy or thrombectomy, whatever you want to call it. So that was completely different than the TIPS that I thought I was going to do. So yeah, it was actually a pretty fun case. We don't get too many of those, but uh, during the daytime, I should say. Usually we get called in for those in the middle of the night. So it's kind of nice to do that in the daytime with, uh, you know, a lot of personnel around. So basically this patient came into the ER, did a CAT scan, showed a large pulmonary embolism, taking up almost the entire main and bilateral pulmonary arteries. So we call that a saddle pulmonary embolus because it kind of rests on the main pulmonary artery trunk like a saddle would. I think I did a video on pulmonary embolism, which I will link up here. So you can go check that out. And I talked about where pulmonary embolisms come from or pulmonary emboli come from and usually DVTs in the lower extremity, but if you need a refresher, I did it with imaging, link up here. So I'm actually, it is 5 p.m. by the way at the moment, and I'm actually starving. So hold on a sec, let me get a snack. Otherwise, I won't be able to continue this. What happens now after I finish the procedure, we just brought the patient up to their room, and right now I have to do all the like post-op stuff. Like I have to do the brief op note, which is like, you know, a brief little note telling everybody what I did so that they know what happened during the procedure. And then after that, I will have to actually dictate a summary of the entire operation or the entire procedure, in which I go into detail about like what vessel I was in, what catheter I used, all that kind of stuff. We do have templates for that, but it does take a little time and you wanna be pretty accurate because because if you say something that's not accurate, that could be medical fraud. Much like surgeons who do op notes, our dictations are everything. Op note, orders, tell the team everything that happened, do my dictation, then I can get out of here. Okay, so just finished dictations. Uh, I'm about to put my jacket on because it's freezing and head home and wait for Andrana to get off work so we can eat dinner together. Because I know I say this every time, but even I'm not on call this week, my mother-in-law brought us a roasted chicken dinner. I don't know why she does this so much, but I'm down for it and I'm here for it. So we're gonna have a nice dinner again tonight. So I forgot to mention though, I did take a video of the pulmonary embolectomy that we did and I'll show you the results of it, but you may have already seen it on my TikTok. I don't know, I'm making a TikTok video and this video at the same time and I don't know which one's going to be out first. So if you follow me on TikTok, you may have seen this footage already. Otherwise, I'm going to put it in this video and it's kind of shot in portrait mode because it was for TikTok talked originally but you'll see some pretty cool stuff here and you can see me playing with the clot that I actually pulled out of the pulmonary artery through a big catheter which is crazy so I am headed home right now all right so we just finished the pulmonary artery embolectomy or thrombectomy and we do this for patients with large PEs or pulmonary emboli uh, in the main pulmonary arteries of the heart what we do is we take a large bore catheter the size of this little, if you look on the ruler right here, you can see that little circle that says 24. That's actually the size of the catheter. It looks like a very large straw that we insert into the right common femoral vein. And using our x-ray machine, we use live x-rays to advance that giant catheter all the way up from the common femoral vein in the groin to the heart. And we get into each branch of the pulmonary artery and suck out this clot. And this is actually what the clot looks like. It's this slippery, bloody tissue that kind of forms together and blocks off the pulmonary arteries and we have to get this out because the heart cannot pump blood against this blockage in the pulmonary arteries and if you don't get proper blood flow to the lungs you won't get oxygenated blood which means you won't get oxygenated blood sent to the rest of your body and this is the importance of getting this clot out and this is just me playing with it all over the place because i don't know it's kind of fun to play with so hope you all enjoyed it okay so everything's all wrapped up now and my least favorite part about leaving, even though it's only like 5.20 right now, is, you'll see why. It's literally pitch black outside, which is not fun at all. It's definitely cold enough to wear a nice beanie out, so that's what I have to do now so my face doesn't freeze off on the way home today.
that about wraps up this video. Hope you all enjoyed coming along with me for a day in the life, like the good old fashioned times that we used to do. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and also TikTok because I've been posting some good stuff over there. Otherwise, as always, I'll see you all on the next video.